Hello everyone and welcome to the Horror Room. I'm Travis Bruce and today we're doing another Indie Horror Spotlight. Today I have with us filmmakers and they have an amazing short movie that I had a pleasure of seeing. By the way, watch that bad boy. And it's called Blue Red, I mean sorry, Blood Red Blues. And I have with us Jordan and Jules Sealander. Guys, welcome to the Horror Room. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Hello. It's a pleasure having you on. So tell my audience a little bit about Blood Red Blues. Uh, I guess it's a vampire movie um, about the Brides of Dracula and where they ended up years later. Uh, there's a recent loss that they are grieving over, which has created tension in the uh, dynamic of the uh, partnership. Partnership, yeah. Yeah. Uh, basically, it's kind of like whatever happened to the Brides of Dracula, like how did they carry on? What are they up to? How are they living in modernized society? Um, and we just really went for a new take on the Brides. I was just selling antiques out of an antique shop. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an interesting concept. I mean, there's something that I guess a lot of us have wondered what happened. Now, what gave you the inspiration to come up with this idea for this short film? Uh, well, um, he we jokes, were watching, yeah. He jokes that if he wanted to do a monster film, and the vampires are like one of the easiest, in our opinion. Some things. Yeah, some things. <laughs> yes. There we go. There we go. Ready to uh, roll. Yep. Um, yeah, I guess the last movie was like a, uh, exploring. I guess inadvertently until you kind of step back and start watching it with a bunch of crowds um, it was like the moment of death and then this one was like the people left behind grieving even though they're not related at all um, plot, plot wise like talking, thematically uh, talking our first film yeah. Grave for the Dead um, so anyways we were just kind of exploring the next process of that um, like overcoming grief I guess um, we were watching a lot of like old 70s vampire movies during COVID, so so that definitely was like we should just do our own take on it. Um, I think in the novel, the brides of Dracula do get killed right before the uh, hunters storm the castle, I believe by Van Helsing. But in our world, uh, that was just a legend or something, and um, yeah, so a lot of uh, Shiloh 70s horror movies were really like our biggest inspiration. Those good old and the 70s Euro and the Euro films. Yeah. And the European yes. uh, uh, Hammer Horror, too, and stuff like that. I love Hammer Horror, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. So, yeah, yeah just kind of like a modern take on that. What are they up to? Yeah. How are they getting by? Because there hasn't been any... Okay, so, so I'm, I, I, I might bash this. Uh, well, there hasn't been any original vampire movies in a long time. Oh. Yeah. I mean, and... To see a fresh take or a fresh photo paint on a vampire story, it, I mean, it was kind of refreshing. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, we also, we noticed that too. And we wanted to definitely go with like more female leads, more focused on like the female aspect of it as they are the brides. And usually, in a, I, and don't get me wrong, I love all those vampire movies, but they're just sort of like, supporting characters if you will and we were like let's feature mm -hmm. them you know like dracula the supporting character yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> couple, couple, couple Just, shots. like quick little yeah. <laughs> death scene <laughs> in our film you see what happens now, to them. <laughs> it's exactly now that, now from from the time you can see this idea how long did it take from that time to the actual production january we wrote it and then we thought it was too big of a movie to film. So then we um, zigzag our way into this movie we ended up shooting after. So they ended up reversing um, about possessed dance shoes. Um, so we were like focused on pre-production on that. And then uh, we kind of stopped um, and we're just like, you know, we're, I think the vampire one's ready to go. Um, we had, we had the house. So it was like, yeah, my that's the hardest location Victorian house. other than the <laughs> antique shop. Um, <laughs> We were just able to, yeah, so, you know, we zig instead of zag and again, pivoted back. And then I would say four months. So from January, we were shooting at the end of April. Yeah, well, yeah. we were shooting at the, um, at the end of April into May. May, yeah. so like exactly a year ago. Yep. So it, we really <laughs> had to uh, crunch it with our pre-production. It, it was like a week-long shoot, kind of. 
Yeah. With two of the days being yeah. half days. Yeah. So. So it was. Now, it is, <laughs> well, I, I can imagine. Now, now, was it tough to? I asked the filmmakers who make short films. Is it tough to? Put that character development, the the story, the plot, all into a short time span. Yes and no. Um, a for of, yeah, a lot of costumes. Yeah, a lot of costumes, <laughs> but also like I feel that we did a really good job with kind of cutting it down to the bare bones of what was like necessary. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. A lot gets crammed, and like a lot of the scenes are just short little, you know, like just. Sure someone getting dragged through a hallway it's like oh okay well that scene's over now um so then at times it feels like you're going fast and with the movie too i guess um it just kind of you know keeps moving along i guess uh once you get past we, we also accidentally almost made this a feature we did have to cut it down to 39 minutes which seems to be a lot of the festivals like minimum requirement or sorry. maximum requirement i'm sorry uh so you know, we, we definitely had to sit there and kind of cut extra stuff that we filmed, which was hard because, you know, we love all of it, of course, but yeah. we wanted to make sure it was still considered a short. We've had reactions where it was like, you should have made it longer, should have been shorter, yeah. you know, so, um, but at the same time, we just felt like a lot of streaming now is about 30 to 45 minutes or so, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. um, not that we would ever want this to be like a show or anything, but... Right. Um, you know, we just want to see, we want to play in that length, I guess. Um, see, see what we can do. Yeah. Challenge. Now, 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 did you ever think about possibly making this into a feature link? We do actually have Ooh. a length script. So this would be sort of like an, epi an episodal, I don't know. Episodic. Sure, episodic. There we go. Episodic. I was like, um, kind of prequel if you will, and then we do have a feature written that we're hoping that we can make possibly next year. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Awesome. It's another another one location, um, but yeah, it's got a bigger cast uh, and another inversion of the vampire story again yeah. as well. Uh, I think I think Mickey would come back. Oh yeah, Mickey would definitely come back. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mickey would come back, so um, yeah. We have, we have it all written. Uh, we're, we got some ideas to change from the script now after getting some feedback. Haven't gotten around to it yet, so it's in this weird state where we do have it written, but already uh, we, have, we know what we want to yeah. yeah, twist a little bit. Well, listen, I, I'm looking forward to it. So. Yay. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, what got the both of you into saying, you know what, fuck it, let's make some horror movies? What got this you one <laughs> is a horror okay. movie. <laughs> uh, I like horror. Um, you know, we always go back to uh, it was that thing you were sneaking around doing. Uh, I came from like a family that was like, I can't watch this. Um, rightfully so. I, I guess I was a little scared uh, growing up, but then it would kind of became like, oh man, I like that adrenaline rush. Can we watch another movie next time I come over? <laughs> like, don't tell my mom. Like, um, and then. You know, I fell in love with the Universal Monsters, too, I think, in third or fourth grade. Uh, that was, like, a nice entry point. Um, so, yeah, me and my friends did a lot of, like, we were inspired by Monty Python with, like, you know, the bunny scene uh, and Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Um, just mm -hmm. this kind of ridiculous blood flying everywhere. And uh, as we morphed into high school, we kept doing that. Um, we saw Shaun of the Dead, and we're like, that was it. Like, you know, like, they did it perfect, what we're trying to do. And then we did like a short or a feature film that was like a punk rock movie that my friend Andrew Palmer wrote um, right out of college, I would say, for like a year and a half afterwards. And we shot that over six months. And it was, you know, we snuck some fake blood in there a couple of times. Um, but, <laughs> you had to. But yeah, that was like considered to, right? like our debut. And uh, even now we had people like, when are you going to be done with this horror thing? I'm like, I'm just coming back around to it. You know, so, like, <laughs> and I come from a very different background where my mom helped sneak me into the Blair Witch Project, me and my neighbor friend. Nice. Uh, yeah, and she kind of exposed me to Halloween and all the like old greats. You wouldn't be able to tell now, now she's kind of veering away from horror movies and all that, but she still has a soft spot for them because she also acts in our horror movies as well. She's uh, in the antique oh, scene in Blood yeah. Red Blues. Yeah, and so. Nice. Um, 
it's kind of funny because I'm like, Mom, you secretly still like horror, don't you? It's a little <laughs> um, bit. Just a bit, but... She saw know. Mania. Yes, yeah, she saw Mania. <laughs> In the 80s. So. So. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Wait, what? And then I just grew up, I was um, in a ballet company and grew up dancing my whole life, so I've always been a performer in that aspect. Yeah, so <laughs> she's a natural just performer in general. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Because my mom was similar to yours, like at five years old, my mom was a huge horror fan. We go to, to the video stores and she would, she would, she's the one who introduced me to horror at a young age. So yeah, And like, I became a horror fan ever since. I mean, that's the way to do it, right? I mean, I, my dad always used to tell me um, that I threw a tantrum because I wanted to rent Chucky at five years old. And he had to drag me out of the blockbuster kicking and screaming. Because he's like, I don't think you realize what kind of a movie this is. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> now, is it nice to be, you know, as to be able to work with your partner and, and do something that you're both passionate about? Yeah. yeah, it makes it a lot easier because we just like bounce ideas off of one another all the time. It's a nice tag team, I'd say. Like when one's I'm in the mood, it's okay. I'll I'll take that in the writing, or um, you know, you have all the stuff to do and the list for yourself, and then you come home. She's always like, "Yeah, I got two of your jobs left. You just have to do these two. Oh. Okay, like yeah. you know, yeah. um, for one for one drains, the other one pulls through. You know, yeah, so you just kind of. Um, Tagging each other in and out and going from there. Yep. All right, so I'm going to ask you both a set of questions. All right? Let's cool. do it. <laughs> okay, so Jules, I'm going to start off with you, and then Jordan, I'm, I'm going to have you answer a set of questions. Jules, what is one thing about Jordan that you're like, wow, when it comes to filmmaking, I wish I had that? He knows how to get some of the most interesting shots like you know I'll, I'll watch him get all the way on the ground in the most awkward position possible and I'm like I know whatever he's getting it's gonna work also he can tell what he's missing when he's in the editing room and so he'll just quick you know throw in some of his oh, what do you call it his sneaky little shots that I like to view afterwards but he knows exactly what he needs and what's missing while he's filming to make sure that when he's in the editing room, he has it all pieced together so that it's cohesive. And I think that's like one of the most talented things to like know. Uh, he also, you know, a lot of people storyboard and mm -hmm. he really likes to get into the space and feel it out organically instead of, you know, making it so precise. Obviously we have an idea of what we're gonna be filming in the space. We don't go in totally empty handed, but, I think it's kind of great to see him just sort of in his brain working it out and then directing us exactly where we need to go, what his vision is, and then it makes filming so much more easy and organic. Jordan? Okay. What I like about that's about her. Yeah. Uh, as a filmmaker, she's able to do a lot of the dirty work uh, where I start that, you know, I love writing. I love all that, but she's the one who knows, like, we got to go location scouting today, and it's my day off. Um, she has this drive, and I also appreciate, you know, I feel like every filmmaker slash director secretly always wanted to be an actor. Um, I do have background acting. I acted in a lot of my high school stuff, you know. I He's a great actor. did the civic theater stuff, but I never, like, felt comfortable on that side of the camera. Um, and like Jules just makes it so effortless and like almost, you know, um, when she's on, she, she just knows like what to do. You know, we have no time and we got to get this in two or three takes. Uh, I don't, I don't stay on one shot very long. You don't get it by the third time you're wasting time. So like my rule, uh, just cause we're on such a tight schedule, um, budget, tight schedule. like literally three, three times from that takes, like we should have moved down the last one. Um, maybe we could have used it. Um, but Jules is, just able to like nail that aspect, the performance aspect. And the fact that on her very first movie where she spoke, no dialogue, got nominated and then won uh, an award um, at Days nice. of the Dead, like for the best actress uh, for No Great for the Dead as her character read. Like, I was like, that's, I was that's like, you know, we were all like, wow, 
like, you know, um, and she gives a really great performance and, and you know, kind of her and Philip both carry that movie and there's no dialogue spoken along the dance music. Um, so I just really appreciate, you know, how, how, uh, you know, and then also she helps write the female perspective in the movie, the sure. women's point of view. That's important. Um, yeah, I definitely like, how do we, you know, get around a lot of this stuff, uh, you know, we like the dialogue. Um, a lot of times back in the day, you're writing that, and now that I have heard a, with a corrector, um, tag team, tag team with, it, it just definitely keeps that aspect on, uh, which you said is important as well, so. Love it, guys. Love it. Now, I'm going to see how much the both of you know about each other. Okay. Jordan, what is Jules' favorite horror movie of all time? Oh, boy. Did you say Halloween? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it has a secret window. Secret window as well. <laughs> That's like, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Those some good ones. The Original Halloween? The yes. original. The, the original. Uh, the original. Most, That's my I, favorite. So we, watch, we watch it every Halloween. We yeah. missed it one year. Um, I can't remember why. And my mom actually is the one who showed it. showed it to me, and I was horrified. Like, I just remember being so scared to go to bed at night. <laughs> <laughs> and it still sticks. <laughs> I mean, it, it really does. I mean, everything about the original Halloween is my favorite. I mean, just from the Michael Myers appearance, um, we'll, we'll play by Nick Castle, but that score, oh, that score God. just is hammering you. It just, jeez, so, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's the most terrifying part of the movie. Agreed. I, I do love the cinematography, too, uh, and mm -hmm. everything they did uh, there as well. Oof. Jules. I bet I got that one. What is, yes. what is Jordan's? All right. This is a tough one because, you know, we always play Desert Island. And he can him. never okay. pick just one. Okay. So, like, not only can I not do Desert Island with my movies, just to preface this, um, I can't even, like, do it by genre. No. Right? Like, no. I, I, you know what I mean? Um, like, so then I narrow it down, like, okay, let's just do a Desert Island horror. And sometimes I'm like, let's just do it with five movies. And, Anyways, I, I would have to say off. that if you're talking childhood Jordan, it's the original The Wolfman. Good job, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, if we're talking like 80s, 90s slasher, he loves Scream. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's also, it's like he loves Halloween, and then he also likes um, Secret Window. Like, the list goes on. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, I can do Desert Island by, like, subgenres of horror. Like, my five favorite vampire movies, maybe. Sure. My five favorite werewolf. Like, He's a I, werewolf guy. I, you know? I do like werewolves. Really? Yeah. I, again, I think we're able to write vampires because growing up they weren't my favorite. So I feel like with a werewolf, I feel like I would be too close to it. And we don't have the budget to make the transformation. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I actually just had um, a indie horror filmmaker on recently, and I watched his. He, he had a werewolf movie called Pounce, and I was like, "There hasn't been a good werewolf movie in a while." Like, like people, for some reason, stare away from making werewolf movies. The transformation. If, if you're not uh, if you're not going for American Werewolf in London, you know what I mean. Yeah, just it's, don't it's even hard try. To the audience <laughs> yeah. after there's been so many great. And then it's definitely, I just, I feel like it's all about the costume, the transformation. So it's I would love to have a shot. <laughs> we keep saying maybe you could do it in like the style of a scanner darkly, you know, yeah. the mm -hmm. um, and then just have like a puppet that you paint over yeah, and make an animated. That's the only like back door we found in to an idea like that. But even that is just like, I want to. You know, my werewolf ideas in it. It's a big commitment. <laughs> so it is. It is. Especially in the indie world, it's a big commitment. Yes, exactly. But at the same time but at the same time Hollywood has had a chance to make a good werewolf movie and they and they can't fucking do it either, so Agreed. They're so fumbling in various aspects every time. Yeah. Dog soldiers I like. Yeah. Yeah. 
That was, yeah, early, yeah. that was early 2000s, I guess. The, the, Wolfman, <laughs> the Wolfman remake, it's okay. I, he likes it pretty good. I mean, I, I'm I, not okay. like, against it, but... I don't hate it, yeah. Rick Baker's makeup for Benicio Del Toro was awesome, I thought. Um, they got a lot of the set design right for when he appears and he's like, you know, like a home works. I just think they all devolve now into two werewolves fighting each other, a good werewolf and a bad werewolf. Yeah. And if you're going to do a good yeah. werewolf, you might as well do Teen Wolf, like Michael J. Fox, like, you know, <laughs> something like that. Again, he will do anything werewolf. <laughs> uh, yeah, or like, you know, I, I just, yeah, I have a lot of opinions on, on werewolf movies. Yeah. Um, I, I always give them, I mean, you know, it'll always be like at least five out of ten for me because I'm like, it's a werewolf movie. Yeah. There <laughs> so, you go. so they got a lot going for them. But the next couple stars are hard to build upon, I feel. And the Howling, by the way. People don't give the Howling. Enough I love the Howling. Howling is a, it's a fucking excellent werewolf. I agree. I agree. I think they both came out so close, American Werewolf and Howling, that people had to pick one. I'm like, they're both great. They're both great. They're both they great. back it differently. Yes. The last scene just is. <laughs> like, yes. you know, like, it would work so well in modern day, too, like streaming now or something. I need a movie similar like that, I feel. Uh, it's, I totally um, agree. They're both great movies. Yeah. Listen, guys. Werewolf movie. Don't let it go. Let's do it. I know. <laughs> I do have Let's an idea. It. I do have an idea of... Uh, <coughs> but he has... He's piecing together various like ideas, and he does have a rough script of a female werewolf. Ooh. Which might be cool. In version. Yeah. But it's, I mean, it's been done, but. I know. Yeah. You know, going all the way back to the 50s or 60s, too. Sure, sure. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. So, where can everyone find you and your movies? So, on Instagram and Facebook, we're No Grave Films. We had to take a rite of passage from the success of No Grave for the Dead, our first short. So, we decided to name our production company No Grave Films. Uh, we're on there, and then we are individually linked with our, like, uh, what do you call it, private accounts to No Grave Films once you're in our profile. Um, and then, you know, you can find us on Facebook on Julie Sealander, he's Jordan Sealander, and then same thing with Instagram, I think my handle name is Ruby Red Jewels, and you're Wolfman Punk 41. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Guys, cool. listen to <laughs> Well, listen, when you make that werewolf movie or let's be make your next project, please contact right. me. I would love to have you back on. Oh, oh yeah, of man. course. We'd love to be back yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> you have made a new fan. So. Yay. <laughs> Keep up the we good appreciate work. You. We appreciate, appreciate you. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, listen, thank you for coming to the Horror Room. I'm Travis Bruce, and they're the Sealanders. Listen. Look out for their work and look out for Blood Red Blues and follow them on social media and their website. Thank you for coming. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye. Bye.